we have uh, our next speaker is a futurist. You may have heard him speak before at another event in Vancouver. He speaks at a lot of different engagements and does a lot of writing as well. Is often writing for the Huffington Post. And the talk is the Internet of Useless Things. So please welcome on stage Nick Badminton. Right, okay. So um, <coughs> I'm a futurist. I, uh, about 20 years ago, I used to play with artificial intelligence and neural networks and grammar and linguistic systems. And then I, I hacked my way through about 18, 19 years of my career. I've worked in the sharing economy, big management consultancies, fancy software companies. And I realized that a lot of this doesn't really fit with who I am. Um, I like to uh, commentate on technology. And today, I'm going to commentate on the Internet of Things. Or as I like to call a lot of what actually comes out, the Internet of Useless Things. Okay, uh, I'm going to be your guide. It's, it's a strange and mystical world. There are millions of products out there, and there's a million more um, created every single day. Okay, um, this, is, uh, <coughs> this is called the hype cycle. So this actually tracks how technology is going through a number of different stages, like innovation triggers. It's like, that's a great idea. We've, we've done it in the lab, and now we can take it somewhere. The peak of inflated expectations, and that's exactly where we're going to be. Sorry, this is really a useless thing right here. Okay, so the peak of inflated expectations, that's where we are with uh, the Internet of Things. That's why there's so many bad ideas. Um, but Cisco's actually gone on record to say there's going to be about 500 billion connected devices in the world by 2025. Um, that's an awful lot of things. So in this room, it would be your chairs. It would be the lights. It would be the sound desk. It would be the devices in your pockets. It's probably your jeans and your, and your sneakers. Um, it might even be uh, some earrings. It can pretty much be everything. So Cisco's betting big on this. It's because they're going to sell a bunch of technology that enables this. Um, uh, but really, what we've got is an epic face palm. In fact, like so much epic face palm um, that I'm going to share today is going to make you really wonder if humanity has actually gone crazy. OK. Let's look at the home. OK, where we live, connected devices. It's going to be pretty interesting. We're going to sit in our kitchen, and our Roomba's going to like start swearing at us for being too messy. Um, our, our fridge is going to stop letting us in to grab beer when we've been out for drinking too much. Um, the plant is going to be really unhappy because we haven't spoken to it for several weeks or even watered it. I've got a plant called John. He's not a connected thing, but I love him very dearly. Um, but the home's overhyped mostly because Everyone talks about fridges, the internet of, of fridges. Because when I'm in the supermarket and I'm like, oh, what do I need to eat? I need to have a camera in my fridge showing me that I've only got three eggs. It's completely useless. So I don't like to talk about fridges at all. Um, OK, so, so no, no fridges. And don't worry about having a connected fridge. It's the biggest misnomer of, of, home, of home technology that you can have. OK, food. Moving on to food. Way more interesting, uh, the happy fork. So you can carry this around in your pocket. And when you go to, to a restaurant, you can eat with it. And it will tell you how quickly you're eating, what, uh, the weight of what you're eating. Um, I hate it. I mean, seriously, like, how unhealthy is this? I'm pretty sure that you can't actually wash it in any way that's really safe for the electronics inside of it as well. Um, so uh, maybe it's uh, a, a massive harbinger of, of bacteria and disease. OK. Um, the smart plate, I uh, always like to think of it, it's like a prison plate for your home. You can put your food on it. You can work out the calorific content. It's, it's a bad idea. A lot of these are in Kickstarter as well. Um, I need sound. I need the sound for the video. One, two, okay. <coughs> okay. So uh, at, at this stage of the evening or the other day, I like to walk around the stage trying to fill the, these gaps with some useless, uh, banal talk. Um, ah, is it? It's a frying pan. You put it on a stove and cook on it, just like any other frying pan. No buttons, no switches. But once you get the Pantelligent app on your mobile device, it gives you the skills of a master chef. 
You see, Pantelevin has a temperature sensor right at the center of the pan and sends data wirelessly to your phone while you cook. What's for dinner tonight? Steak? Salmon? Bacon? Mushroom risotto? Bacon? It's the best video ever. I'm in the mood for salmon. Let's cook. Pantelevin wants to know how thick the salmon is so it can adjust the cooking time and temperature, just like a real chef would. Pretty smart. There's no pairing or setup, just tap the phone to the handle. Pantelvin tells me when the pan is hot enough to start, if the heat is too high or too low, and everything else. Flip the salmon. Thank you, Siri. How's that looking? It does that every time. If you can follow GPS instructions when you drive, you can follow Pantelvin instructions when you cook. Okay, uh, who's a terrible cook here? Would you buy Pantelligent? No. No, no one should buy Pantelligent. Uh, it's pretty great. It's one of my favorite videos. It's about five minutes long. The guy's hilarious. I think he, he works at MIT. Um, the branding, everything about it. No, just no. Okay, um, I, and then moving from there, this is Brad the Toaster. This was an experiment done by an artist in the UK. Uh, Brad is an intelligent toaster that uses artificial intelligence to actually work out if you love him enough. If you don't use him enough for uh, enough toast on a daily basis, it will actually contact through the internet another location and reassign itself. Um, I love this as an idea. It's kind of a useless thing because who wants to have a toaster that, you get, that gets really upset with you? It's like, where, 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 where's the toaster? Yeah, he got really pissed off. Look at the sticky note on the side. Okay, right. Um, and then into fashion. Fashion is, is, is a hotbed of useless things in, in the internet of useless things. Um, Mapo, uh, the world's first uh, connected beauty mask. I s I've watched the video about 18 times and I still can't work out exactly what it does. I think it, it sits on your face and sort of tells you how good your cheeks are. Um, it, does, it really doesn't make sense. I'm not going to share the video because it, it, it just doesn't make any sense at all. Okay. Um, Belty. Has anyone heard of Belty? This was a big hit at CES a couple of years ago. It, it's a belt that tells you, um, like, you sit down. It's like you sat down three times today. Oh, you've grown an extra half an inch after you eating that pasta. I think it's one of the worst things. Look at this guy, though. He's so happy. He's like, I know how healthy my waist is right now. No, um, definitely not. Um, Synapse, this is actually uh, an artist. Uh, it's quite interesting. It's a 3D printed um, outfit. Um, it's got lights in there, and she's wearing an EG helmet that tells people what her mood is. So you can actually see her fear or her anger. So it's like you're talking to someone, you just can't quite work them out. It's like, oh, yeah, you hate me. Awesome. <laughs> okay, fashion. So many opportunities in fashion. Uh, health and fitness. Um, this is this is like the the mother load for connected devices in our world. Who's got a Fitbit here? Come on, so, someone someone's lying here. Okay, but but fitness devices, everything. It's like how many steps have I, I done today? It's like I don't remember doing fifteen thousand steps. Oh yeah, I put it in my dog's backpack, right? Okay. Sound. What is it? But a seemingly unending chase. An improbable dream, a journey with no apparent end. Success Don't know what this guy's saying, actually. Is living the dream, evolving. You need to know where you want to go, what you want to do, and when to move. And that you're going the right way. What is unknown is what makes you weak. He's not weak, people. You need to know when you're ready. Okay, you wear those gloves to do this workout. You feel? When do you pause? When do you stop? When to take your shirt off and work out as well. It's awesome. You need to know that your grip is strong. Your power is right, and your force is enough. Don't just work hard, work smart. Look at the size of the gloves. Oxygen. Amazing. Your success with a heart. 
I still don't know what half the words are in the, in the actual video, right? It, it's, it's awesome. It's like, okay, I, I can't work out right yet. I've got to get to the gym and put my gloves on. Um, okay, next. Menstruation is an important indicator of your health. Not once, but every month, it tells you something about your body. What if we could check our health every month and have better, clearer ideas about how our bodies are dealing with our periods? Whether at the gym or busy working and killing it at work, we promise you, you will not be disturbed. You no longer have to worry about when to empty your cup or change your pad or tampon. Halfway through, she's like, oh, I, I just wonder. By using Moon Cup, you'll be able to learn more about your menstrual pattern. Oh no, it's fine, I can do another three laps. Color, and cycle using the Moon <laughs> Cup smart form application. Anytime, anywhere. Um, so, so I posted this on, on, a, on a status that Jordan uh, posted to, the, to the Facebook a couple of, couple of uh, days ago. And I said, oh, here's a teaser. And I put up the Loon Cup, uh, I put up <laughs> the Loon Cup uh, video. And someone underneath said, I really love this idea. I really need to get it. And then I chatted to another couple of friends. They were like, um, we just look at it to see if it's full. Okay, the Loon Cup. It gets better, so much better. Epic music, always epic music in these videos. don't know what most of this video is about. Okay. That guy can do it because his cup's telling him that he can do it. Okay. It's going to be okay. It's like, okay, level of hydration before operation. Damn it, where did I put my cup? And I've lost my watch as well. Damn it, damn it. Do I feel thirsty? I don't know without my smart cup. And smart cups are rife. Um, no, there's, there's another one and another one. And it makes me really sad because there's so many of them. Smart cups, hydration. Okay. Um, <laughs> Then it gets, I, I, I'm going from, from hydration to maybe the other end of business. Um, Neil Offer Merchant, very famous TED talker. Sitting is the smoking of our generation. You're all sat down here. You are not good people for sitting down. <laughs> this video is gonna tell you that you're not good people for sitting down either. Is it playing? No. Yes. You're in right. for another long day, and your papers are already piled up. Oh, and Irvin just remembered to give you that order that was due two days ago. Stupid Irvin. It's already 1.22, and there's more work to be done. Then the back pains strike. But take a look over there. That's Sally. And Sally isn't worried about being stressed. Everyone hates Sally in the office. Back pains. Why? She uses Dharma. And with Dharma, she sits smart. Using highly sensitive fiber optic sensors, Dharma measures precisely how you sit. Then through the Dharma app, it coaches you to sit better. So much better. Can you all sit up no properly as well, just long. right now? Dharma I can do that without being a smart and remind you cushion. And the right time to stand up. I gotta work, I gotta stand up and work. It's like the internet of ass.
Right, okay. Um, and then Ira, um, this is actually a really smart thing. It's a jacket you walk around, it's like, oh, I'm feeling a bit stiff. And whilst you're walking around, it will just massage you. Um, but it still doesn't make sense to me because I like to be relaxed and sat down and not necessarily wearing a jacket when I get massaged. Okay, love and sex. Thank you, Bartosz, for your entire presentation because it sets this up perfectly. Okay, love and sex. Um, <laughs> there was this great app that came out a couple of ye uh, uh, years ago called Spreadsheets. Has anyone here used Spreadsheets? Yeah, cool. So what you do is you put it on your phone and you put it on the on the on the bed and it measures a number of things. So let's look at the number of things that it measures in um in 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 relation to sex. So duration, how long can you go for? Uh, days in a row, uh, 24 hour period, six, this, guy, this guy's uh, uh, or girl has done it six times in a 24 hour period. The decibel peak. So if you're not screaming at the top of your lungs, you're not having great sex. And max, oh, TPM, most thrusts in one minute. So th there's something wrong with, with the entire thinking behind this application of like slow lovemaking is terrible. Like giving head is terrible. Um, being quiet when you have sex is terrible. Um, this is just a terrible idea, but like tens of thousands of people have used it. It's quite fun. Okay, and then lovely is a cock ring um, that quantifies your cock, I guess. And it's called lovely. I, I don't think it's that lovely. Uh, apparently, you can have better sex um, with your cock ring as well. Heteronormative uh, imagery there. Um, yeah, um, it was half, halfway to its goal. Um, and then this, the pièce de résistance. Imagine if you had a video and that video was sexy or it's something romantic or something that just does it for you. And then imagine if you had a really super realistic penis that you could program to follow the video, right? Now, I was, I was, I was in uh, conversations with the organizers whether to uh, actually uh, censor this. I actually think it's funnier with the censorship. This is the most realistic looking penis I've actually seen on any dildo in the world. And I say censoring, I'm not really censoring it that much. I also wonder what it'd be like if you if if you're playing like Black Hawk Down or like Zero Dark Thirty. It's like, what kind of vibrator action would you get with that? Okay, very realistic. My penis can do these things. Um, and it goes the other way. Um, <laughs> if anyone wants to see this, I can I can send you the video. It's gratuitous. It's amazing. Okay. <laughs> That's my most favorite thing in the whole presentation as well. Okay, so I, I really want to wrap up my whole presentation. I just want to share a few things that I find to be completely ridiculous. Uh, but there, there's a real final thought. Um, we are actually being dragged down into all of our technology too much. We, we're kind of losing what we're, what we're trying to be as humans, which is connective and amazing. Um, the Internet of Things will surround us eventually, and it's already started. And some of those things just will be there, not doing anything obvious like the things that you see here. Sure, some of us will use some of these things. Sure, we're going to have phones, but really, we have to be more human. And really, <laughs> when you're being human, just throwing away these devices and not wearing them is sometimes the best way to be. Um, thank you for the talk. I just want to tell you about a couple of things. On the 30th of April, I'm doing sort of an unconference like this. Um, there'll be more information coming out. Um, it's called Future Camp. If you want to talk about the future of anything, you should come up and talk, and it's going to be awesome. And secondly, I, I speak and write for a living. It's a lot of fun. I love hearing new stories. I love hearing new products. People email me all the time. This presentation came from a few emails from people as well. So you can email me at nick at nicholasbadminton.com. I, I write a hundreds of posts on, on that um, blog as well. Um, I also run a, a, a free meetup called Vancouver Futurist that happens every month. So just go to meetup and find that. We'd love to see you there as well. Um, thank you very much.